Okay, so in this demonstration here, we're going to be taking a look at paper chromatography as a separation technique. Uh, usually we start off here with a roll of chromatography paper here. Um, depending on the size of my test tube here, I've already cut them into tiny little strips. Uh, you'll notice here I've actually cut the, um, the side of this uh, chromatography paper into a triangle. The hope of it is eventually when I uh, dunk the triangle here inside the test tube, each of the test tubes in front of me have been filled with about a centimeter deep of water. I'm going to fill uh, the water up so that the water covers the uh, bottom half of the triangle. Uh, this shape here is used to try to encourage the water to come up fairly flat. Uh, we have the X marks the spot here. Uh, I have eight different uh, food coloring spots here. I'll show you how I dotted the other ones here uh, with the blue here. Uh, I'll know where the uh, food coloring actually began. Uh, we're going to let uh, the water slowly climb up the different capillary uh, tubes here inside this chromatography paper. And we'll, uh, after a time lapse picture, we're going to make a few measurements. So I'll uh, just show you what I did here. So again, I have my super chromatography paper. I've cut it into the triangle as well. I'm just going to demonstrate for you what I did with this blue food coloring here. So. I'm going to take some of this blue. Uh, some of these are primary colors. Some of them are sort of mixtures of colors here. I took a little bit of the blue dye here. I'm going to dab it on uh, the spot that I marked with the next here. So that's going to be the starting uh, line for this food coloring. As the water moves past this mark here, the blue chemicals are going to dissolve into the water. The chemicals that are really soluble in the mobile phase, the water, will run up really quickly. The ones that drag their feet a little bit here will drag uh, behind a little bit and that way we can separate them on the uh, paper. So uh, we're now ready here. I'm going to put these uh, chromatography papers here inside their respective test tubes and I'm going to start them at roughly the same time. So let's bring these up here. So there's the blue and this one here the green is inside. You do the same with the yellow and the red. Usually for chromatography uh, the smaller the dot the better. Um, that way the water gets a chance to actually climb up past uh, the solvent uh, line. If you dunk it in a little bit too far, uh, the color just uh, soaks into the test tube itself. So I'll just show that to you here. Okay. Uh, we're going to leave this for about maybe 5-10 uh, minutes or so and we're going to uh, take a look at what's happened. Thanks guys. All right, so here's a bird's eye view of our results. Uh, our solvent had actually been climbing uh, while I was uh, busy transferring files, so I apologize for all the many lines here. Uh, I tried to uh, label on the paper itself the uh, marks that we are interested in. So all the food coloring dots here started out here at this beginning line. Uh, depending on the chemical composition of the mixture itself, it's been climbing with the water itself. If it's very soluble in the water, it climbs pretty neck and neck with it. Uh, if it sort of drags its feet here, it's a little bit slower to begin with. And over time, think of it as a race, all the runners at the starting uh, line here. But as they run, the faster runners will run really close with the solvent, while this um, other solute here that isn't as soluble here drags behind here and is physically now separated from the rest. So uh, we can actually calculate a value called an RF value. For the RF value, we just need to take two uh, measurements of distance. So let's say I start off with this first one here. Uh, I'm going to begin here just marking off uh, the zero mark here at the starting line. I measure the solvent here to be roughly about 11.5. And then what we want to do is we want to compare how our solute is in comparison to that solvent. So for example, our blue here would be 11 centimeters divided by 11.5. That's going to give you a ratio called an RF value, a ratio of fronts. 
that is an intensive value, so you can actually um, compare the RF value to a known table and see if you can identify which dye this is. So I'm just going to prop down this ruler here so you can make measurements of uh, the different solvents. Uh, some of these uh, food colorings here actually are made out of multiple different uh, compounds as well. So uh, green is actually made out of uh, blue and yellow, as we can see is separated uh, on this uh, one chromatography sheet here. Uh, again, I'm just going to plop down my ruler here so you can hopefully measure a little bit better here. So about 12 centimeters here to the solvent. Uh, your blue line is about 11.7, I'd say. The yellow line here is roughly maybe about 11.5. Okay, That's for the green food coloring. Moving over to the yellow food coloring here in a very similar fashion, uh, the solvent here, um, they're all about the same because I had dropped it in uh, at roughly the same time. So the solvent is roughly about 12.8. If you wanted to compare the blue line here, I'm just gonna prop it up here. So the blue line uh, might be something like um, maybe 11.9 or so. It's pretty neck and neck with it. The yellow is a little bit lower than that here. This is probably only about 10.9. Uh, the red, uh, I've tried to sort of mark off where the red has gotten up to here. This is probably about 10 centimeters and so on and so forth. Again, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to prop down the ruler here uh, so you can hopefully make a measurement of, um, from the starting line here, how far each of these um, uh, ink dyes have actually gone. So the solvent here, again, possibly about 11.5. The blue is a little bit shorter, maybe 11.2. Uh, we have a red line here, about 9.4 or so. Uh, we had a little bit of pink show up uh, in this mixture here, maybe about 5.6 or so. And again, a ratio of fronts is just take the solute distance divided by the solvent distance. So your RF value should always be between 0 and 1. Uh, 1 would be perfectly soluble in the solvent here. It's uh, pretty much uh, run the race with the solvent. So here we have again, our solvent is about 11.8. Uh, Blue line, maybe 11.5. We have a red line, maybe about a little bit shorter than 11, so 10.8. I have another blue line here, so it's possible that you have multiple uh, inks that actually show blue color here. So this one here is about a 6.8. The pink here is a 6.4, give or take. Uh, looking at this sort of yellow neon dye here, uh, looking at our solvent, we're about 12.2, um, let's say. So the blue here, uh, a little bit shorter than it. Uh, we have the yellow, that's a little bit bigger than 11, so 11.1. .1. The red is a little bit shorter than 10 as well, so 10.3, let's say. Uh, moving on to the second to last one here, measuring from the start of our race here, from the starting line, the solvent has gone upwards to about 12.5. Blue is about 12.3. This red line here is about 12, maybe a little bit under 12, so 11.9. Uh, we have a pink line here, so pink line, uh, make sure I line up my ruler, it's probably about 6.8 or so. And the very last one here, uh, slightly off page, so we have our starting line. Our solvent has gone upwards to about 11.6. We have a blue line here, uh, possibly maybe 10.7 or so, uh, 9.6 for a red line. Uh, we have a pink line uh, down here. That one is probably just over 8 centimeters, maybe 8.1 centimeters. Okay. So I just wanted to demonstrate for you what uh, this paper chromatography method would look like. Uh, it's nice seeing all the colors and this uh, actually being separated. Uh, the only problem with this here is it's not quantitative. Uh, the colors are still adsorbed onto the paper. You can't now take the sample of the chemical and now run other reactions with it. Uh, we'd need to switch over to something called column chromatography to actually get it quantitative. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care.